Hi and welcome to Tungsten Tales TV, youtube.com forward slash Tungsten Tales and joining me today I've got a very special guest, Ronnie the Rocket Baxter joining me. Ronnie, great to have you here. Thanks Dylan. Ronnie, you played in this tournament before, you played in all the big tournaments across the BDO and the PDC. Tell us what it's like to come back here to Butlin to play in the Players' Championships again this year. Well, it's great. Every year we do it, you know, and we're hopefully it's on the calendar for the next two or three years. So, yeah, it's just getting used to it in that big hall as well. So, so a few of the players have said it's quite cold in there, so hopefully this year a bit warmer for you guys. Well, hopefully, there. yes. <laughs> it does get to you around a bit, and some people could play with cold hands. I don't know how they do it, because I like a little of a... It gets a bit of a grip for me on the dice. Your world rankings, you're doing quite well in the world rankings. This is obviously, in some people's eyes, a warm up for the world championships next month. Are you looking forward to those world championships? Are you ready to get your teeth stuck into those? Of course, I'm excited now. I'm playing a lot better now at the moment uh, on the pro on the pro tour and everything. So I'm, I'm getting some good results, playing really well. But with this game, you need a little bit of luck. And some, sometimes, if that looks against you, you just can't get that double. Or somebody just does a one dart on the double, he just takes it out. That's, that's how fierce it is today for the dart. So. I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. It's a, it's a quick format, the best of 11, so then it rushes up to best of 17, I think, the day after. But I'm, I'm only going to concentrate on the first day, and that's it. I must just say, sorry about the, the loud noise here. What's happening actually in this arena while me and Ronnie are talking is a lot of the, the fans that are staying here at Butlins are able to compete in a tournament, and the winner, the two winners, get to play tomorrow or on Sunday, I think, ahead of the final. So there's a lot of action going on over there. Do you think that's great that the fans get a chance to play as well? Well, of course it is, just to get, yeah. uh, get, get interactive with it yeah. and, and just to get you to feel what it's like with that crowd uh, just uh, behind you as well, shouting and whatever. It's, uh, it's, it's something else. It's just like the Premier. Premier League is so much different to like the World Championship or even the Pro Tours. Well, the Pro Tours, you don't have a crowd, but uh, when you get to the TV like Blackpool and the World Championship, the, uh, the Premier League is, is so much different. You've been competing at the highest level for such a long time now. You know, you runner-up in two BDO World Championships. You came over to the PDC. You got to the quarterfinals, the semi-finals there. What's kept you at the top of your game for so long? What's kept you in the sport for so long? Uh, well, it's obviously practice as well, but it's confidence, as well, knowing what I can do with the with the skill that I have. So it's just a matter of keeping healthy and uh, just just doing your time on that board and uh, and being good on that board when you need to. How do you cope with that pressure? You know, playing. You know, in, in your local pub with your friends, or you know, playing in smaller tournaments, there's not so much pressure. But when you're up there on the stage this weekend, we're expecting 5,000 fans. You know, the music's on, the pressure's on, the lights are on. How, how do you cope with that pressure? It's a matter of time. You, you do it all the time. I mean, if you if you can't get used to it after 30 years, how long do you need? <laughs> I mean, but 5,000. I mean, it's nothing compared to the Premier. Like I said, I've played in it twice, and them crowds are so much different. So you get each crowd different. So it, it's just a matter of the experience of being up there so many times. Do you still have a passion for darts after all these years? Some people, when they're involved in a sport for so long, it just becomes a job to them, but you still, do you still get up for these big tournaments? you still got a real passion for the sport? Yeah, it is, it is a job first, right? But the passion's still there, and that's why I still love the game. So when the passion goes, I'll have to, I'll have to bow out quietly. Do you work with any younger players? Do you help and advise any younger players? Do they come to guys like you who are sort of veterans in the sport now and ask for advice and support in the sport? Or is, or is that not like that as a sport? Do people just work alone? No, I just give them Phil, Phil Taylor's number <laughs> and they ring him up. It's fantastic. And outside of the sport, what are your, what are your sort of main interests, Ronnie, outside of that? Uh, fishing and breaking uh, uh, poles, <laughs> which I didn't do last time, yeah. Fishing and darts, two great mass participation sports in this country. Why do you think darts are becoming so popular again? It's, it's you know, turnout of the crowds, like you said, at the Premier League here. But what what is behind the sport? What's making it so popular? Uh, well, the grassroots is the pub, obviously. I mean, if you grow up through it, I mean, the youngest are there are so, are so good, and they're not like getting the drink behind them as well. So that's great that they're not doing that. But when they progress, maybe into the pub and, and get to know that that route as well, then they might take it up, might not, but they might just keep out, I don't know. But uh, that's, the way, that's the way the doors goes nowadays. And one last question, you know, I ask a lot of sportsmen, there's different sports, but for you, which darts players do you like to watch? You know, not just play against, but which guys do you like to watch them play darts? Do you think they've got a bit of flair, they're good guys to watch? Um, it's hard to say, there, there are a couple. Um, I mean, you just watch Phil for the, the actual awesomeness of what he can do on that board. Yeah. Um, the flair part, oh, it's um, well, Wayne Mardell used to have that little bit of a flair and uh, get the crowd going and everything. So, so Wayne's one of them. Um, there's not many you can do what Wayne used to do, but then again, Wayne's not playing anymore. So, uh, 
Um, he's took up commentary for, for a change like Four Sky and uh, other TV. So, um, and so uh, Wayne still plays now and again, but it's not it's not like what he used to be. So, uh, but there's not many flurry because it's you, you've got to have a certain kind of uh, charismatic personality to do that sort of thing. Yeah, it's, it's to is to be be boisterous on that on that board when you're throwing a dart to, to get yourself going, get the crowd going, and then to return and then calm yourself. It's it's not for everybody. Brilliant. Ronnie, thank you so much for joining us here on Tongues no and Tales. We've got one last question or of you, and that is to sign this guitar that's been signed by quite a few players already. Yeah. It's for Butlin's uh, nominated charity, which is the Princess Royals Trust. Okay. And it'd be a great honor if you could sign yeah. it for us. That'd be Just fantastic. don't ask me to play it. <laughs> that was the next question. Actually. All right. No. Anywhere? Anywhere you want, yeah. Um, right, so we could, oh, yeah, I'm better off doing it that way. There you go. That's fantastic. Ronnie, thanks so much for joining us. No Best problem. This weekend. Thanks for asking us here, Dill. No Thank worries. You. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, youtube.com forward slash Tungsten Tales. Good night. Yeah. <laughs>